This is Michael Popak. Look at the glasses. Look at the time. It's time for Legal AF After Dark. Federal judges, including Republican ones, are tired of Donald Trump and other MAGA leaders trying to rewrite history about what happened on January 6th. Nobody got hurt. It was a walk in the park, not according to Judge uh, Royce Lamperth, who in a recent sentencing just sent away one of the most uh, egregious, violent Jan 6 insurrectionists and followers of Donald Trump to 20 years in federal prison. It was the second highest sentence. Find out why on Legal AF. Take a listen. Michael Popak, tell us about this uh, powerful sentencing that took place in Washington, D.C. Yeah, we've got, um, you know, we never want people to get Jan 6 fatigue. And I think it was a it was a great, the timing of it, while it might have been a little bit of serendipity, was a great rejoinder to Donald Trump earlier in the week at his rambling, unhinged, demented Mar-a-Lago press conference, which I believe he was goaded into giving because his, his uh, vice presidential candidate, uh, stepped out of bounds and started to attack Kamala Harris with some weird countdown clock for how many times she has it or how long it's been since she gave a press conference. I mean, she's the vice president of the United States. She's got a day job. <laughs> her her side gig is running to save democracy and be the next president of the United States. She doesn't have to stand and give a press conference in the middle of it all. Um, under Wearing what hat would she be doing that? Can't, people campaigning don't give press conferences generally, and vice presidents don't generally give press conferences. But but because he goaded her for that, then Donald Trump said, oh, crap, I got to give a press conference. And that went about as well as the black journalist interview went, meaning not well at all, because you, now you've got Donald Trump who, who can't, can't find, um, he's on shifting sands, and he hasn't been able to recalibrate and won't be able to about how to come up with a line of attack against Kamala Harris that's consistent and doesn't just open up that weird stew of his brain about uh, that that's filled with racism and misogyny and uh, and everything else. And so he can't do it, especially for an hour long unhinged press conference. So at the same time, he says at his, his press conference, there were no, there were nobody, nobody died on Gen 6, no fatalities. It was literally a walk in the park. It was just people's peaceful protest. Judges have now, including Judge Royce Lampert, that we're going to talk about, are getting fed up with hearing right-wing MAGA and the cult leader try to re revise and revisit what happened on Jan 6th. They know better than anybody because there's about a dozen just, I would say about eight justices, judges in the DC uh, circuit court, federal court, that have had to hear these thousand of cases. They've, they've sat collectively and watched tens of thousands of hours of video and audio and social media postings, and they don't lie about how violent this insurrection was, especially at the West Portico and the West Tunnel, which was a medieval uh, battle uh, being waged by um, insurrectionists, including David Dempsey, who we're gonna talk about next, who was the worst, uh, most violent, at the most violent location, most violent battle with an outmatched and outnumbered Metro and Capitol Police against thousands of insurrectionists and he was the worst of the bunch and that's why he got the second highest um sentence of anyone that's been sentenced including the oath keepers and three percenters the only one that beat this guy's 20 years that royce lampert this reagan appointee just gave him was enrico tario who was the founder of the proud boys he even got more than Stuart Rhodes, the one-eyed guy, Yale Law guy, blew out his own eye, who had who who ran the Oath Keepers. So he this this shows you how bad this guy was. And Royce Lampert, people may recall who watch our show regularly, you and I talked about him about six months ago, and I did a hot take on. It. I read from his order where he said uh, he didn't have to say this, but he said it in another sentencing. I am. What what is happening to America because of of re Republican leaders who are trying to rewrite what happened uh, on Jan six? He says I'm used to having defendants in my courtroom 
uh, try to pull the wool over my eyes and tell me what I've just seen or just heard in evidence didn't really happen. I'm not used to leaders doing that. And what he's referring to is, of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene and others saying they're political prisoners. It was just a tour. It was all, you know, just rewriting history. Watch the footage. Royce Lamperth has watched the footage. And so I thought it was a great rejoinder just a day after Donald Trump lied, looked look the American people in the eye once again and lied to them and totally disparaged the memory of nine people who are no longer on planet Earth because of Jan 6th, half of which are law enforcement and the other half, even his own followers who died by stroke or somebody tried to make their way to the, to the speaker's hallway to go kill elected officials and was stopped by law enforcement and heart attacks and drug overdoses and whatever else happened that day. And then people that took their own life that happened to work uh, in law enforcement because of the brutality uh, of what happened on that particular day. That, that alone tells you how, how horrific Jan 6 was, that people no longer would want to be on planet Earth who were in law enforcement because of what they saw and what happened to them. So Dempsey, particularly, uh, you, if you just see the rundown that Royce Lampert did, he he pled guilty. The guy, he was also known on by online sleuthers who tracked him down and reported him to the Department of Justice as a flag gator cop hater guy because he wore a flag gator around his neck and he covered it up to his eyes, um, and he attacked. He was only charged and convicted of of violent attacks on two law enforcement. I'll talk about that in a second. But he did more than that. As Royce Lampert and the Department of Justice put it, he used as human scaffolding other Jan 6th insurrectionists, climbed over them, got to the top, and whatever he could get his hands on, he got his hands on broken furniture, uh, a flagpole, uh, uh, police equipment, and he mercilessly battered law enforcement. One of the two cops that he beat so mercilessly was hit in the head so hard by a flag, I think it was a flagpole or a piece of broken furniture by David Dempsey, that it not only left a gash on the on his head, but the guy, the cop was almost out. He was a detective for the uh, Metropolitan Police. He was almost out on his feet, almost knocked unconscious by this. Uh, Officer Nguyen was just sprayed with a torrent of uh, uh, of bear spray or pepper spray directly into his eyes, not just like you know, like uh, like you know, but uh, like just a full on fire hose of of spray, and and for all of that, and literally, the Department of Justice said this is the, if not the, one of the most violent insurrectionists, and that is a counter to all the people in MAGA and the elected officials that have told the American people that these people weren't armed, they were. If they weren't armed when they got there, they certainly found makeshift arms when they arrived, um, that they were just peaceful protesters expressing their First Amendment rights. They That's not true. And the jails are, are filled with people now who have been convicted because of otherwise. Not in kangaroo, Soviet-style courts, either bench trials or jury trials with evidence, with juries, with grand juries, with convictions, with pleas of, of, uh, to avoid a jury trial of these people. And almost every one of them, except for David Dempsey, I'll, I'll leave it on this for you, Ben. Most of them are broken people after they're sentenced, especially if they're sentenced for 10, 15, or 20 years. And there's a whole group of about 12 of them that are serving between 10 and 22 years. And they blubber and they cry and they beg for forgiveness and they talk about their families and all that. But then there is this hardened group of criminals. This is the group that Donald Trump will let out of the jails like he's like the Joker emptying Arkham Mental Hospital if he gets elected again. And this includes David Dempsey. David Dempsey didn't didn't cry. David Dempsey, according to courtroom watchers, made a symbol of white supremacy on his way out after being sentenced, and others have have chanted Trump won as they drag them off with the with the federal marshals uh, and get them assigned into a prison where they belong. This group of 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 the top from ten years, uh, and this is six or seven different judges of all different political stripes, including Republican and uh, Republican appointed and Trump appointed, have have sent these this group away, this subgroup away. Donald Trump will let them out of the jails, commute their sentence, and pardon them if, if the American people give him an opportunity to do it. 
Well, look, I think it's important that people still know there are Republican mayors like John Giles in Mesa, Arizona, that there are uh, Republican appointed federal judges who are upholding law and order. And we can draw the distinction between a once proud political party in the Republican Party versus whatever this MAGA strand that took over. And frankly, you know, it was part of the bargain that Republicans were striking with the Tea Party. You go back to George W. Bush and the type of alliances he was creating, which ultimately led to, you know, this MAGA strand being the strand that, you know, fully took over. Um, but I think it is helpful to know that you have that uh, out there. Welcome back, Patriot, senior judge appointed by Reagan. Royce Lampert has had it up to here with Donald Trump and uh, and let uh, of course, Dempsey have it in his sentencing as is appropriate. If you like that kind of analysis, where we sit at the intersection of law and politics so you don't have to, and bring it to you as practicing lawyers in these courtrooms, the best way we know how, then you found the right show. We call it Legal AF for a reason, and now you know why. It's every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on this YouTube channel, and then where we put together you know, four or five of the top stories that week at the intersection of law and politics and bring it to you right here unfiltered, uncensored, the only way we know how. We have no outside investors. We're building this network with your help. We're completely people-powered. We're might is mighty and legal A effort-powered. And you can also pick us up on our audio podcast platforms, uh, whatever one you use, just plug in Legal AF. If you know about Legal AF, thanks for being here. We're trying to grow organically, obviously, by word of mouth. We've almost got 3 million followers to the network. Send that clip off to people in your life and ask them to join our show. At least try it out the next Wednesday or Saturday at 8 p.m. where we have a live recording. If you don't know anything about Legal AF, maybe you're new to Midas Mighty or, or a new Midas Mighty or new to Midas Touch content, that was Legal AF. Wednesday, Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, where we sit at that intersection of law and politics so you don't have to. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.